QuickBooks Online 2023 Payroll Settings and Account Mapping. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have open the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser. Open the incognito window and type into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We'll be using the sample company to compare the difference between the accounting view, the view Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. You can change between the two views by selecting the cog up top and the changing of the views on down below. We're going to open up a couple tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. We're going to go back to the tab to the middle so we can go to the reports on the left and open up then one of our faves, that being the balance sheet report. Note that if you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports. Then we're going to tab to the, to the right and then open up the reports again. This time the P to the L, the profit to the loss with the other favorite. Close up the boogie. Do the change of the range from 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Run it to refresh it. Tab to the middle. Close the boogie. Scrolling up like we do every time and go from 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. Now in prior presentations, we set up the payroll and then we process the first month of payroll and you can see the accounts that are impacted on down below it put the liability accounts into this one account for the liabilities these are the withholdings and our taxes withheld but not yet paid to the government and then on the income statement side of things it put the the uh, expense side in this account called wages and then the taxes now you might have a question in terms of how might i want to map these items differently and and we'll also take a look at some other kind of payroll settings that are up in the cog up top so in other words you might be saying hey look i i have some people i would like to map to one payroll account possibly as salaried employees and then another payroll account for non-salaried employees so maybe you want multiple payroll accounts depending on department or whether they're salary or not. How can we map these to different accounts? On the liability side, you might say, hey, look, I would like to be breaking out, not in this format, I wanna break out my federal taxes between the social security and the, and the Medicare for whatever reason and the federal income tax into separate accounts. So I can see them one at a time. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier for you to tie out to your to your 941s or something like that. Maybe you wanna see the employee versus the employer taxes broken out into different accounts or something like that. Then we can go into the settings up top to look at that mapping. Now note, this is a little bit different than the desktop version. If you're used to the desktop version, we've got the, the payroll items that we, we can kind of adjust. Here, a lot of our payroll settings will be up in the cog up top. So you'll recall we, we, we kind of turned on payroll. Just to recap, on the left-hand side, you have to buy payroll if you're going to process payroll in QuickBooks. Your other option is to hire a third-party payroll provider, have them do all the kind of tedious stuff on payroll, and you just enter into the system what's needed for the financial statements and to do the bank reconciliations. Otherwise, if you're doing it within QuickBooks, then you're going to be processing the payroll within here and then there's some other settings up top that are up in the cog and then we can go to the payroll settings so let's just go through these payroll settings one of them is going to be that mapping kind of issue that we talked about and we'll get down to that down below okay so you got your general item so you've got your general information up top so this is the info you used when you applied for the EIN. So if you're doing payroll from an IRS perspective, you need another number that's, a, that's an employee identification number. That's a number that's not just necessary for 
doing payroll per se, or you might not want it just because you have employees. You might want it even if you're a sole proprietor, you being the only, only person doing work in the business so that you can give that number to others, possibly if they need it for 1099 reporting purposes, instead of giving your social security number. Then of course the company type down here is gonna be important, sole proprietor versus other formats so that uh, they can process the proper payroll. It should populate, you would think, automatically there because we entered that information in the company settings when we set up you know, the general company settings. And then you've got your federal tax. I'm gonna close this out, hitting the, the, little, um, the little pencil. So you can find what you need in the letter tax notices. So employer identification number. So this is an EIN that's provided to us when we file for the EIN. So you're gonna need that information as the employer identification number. This is the format uh, of it. They've got the application here if you want to apply uh, directly for it if you don't have that. And so that's gonna be, how often do I file and pay taxes? Uh, form 941 paying semi-weekly since. So you can edit uh, which, which payroll tax form do you file? So you've got your 941 each quarter, 943 each year. Now note that most of the time people file the 941 because that's quarterly filing. So it's, it's, it's kind of like reporting your 1040s on an individual, it's an information form, but instead of wanting it yearly, they usually want it quarterly. Uh, but if you have, if you fall under a certain threshold, or you have agriculture, you might have a different form, 943 or form 944, which is a yearly form. So if you have minimal payroll, then possibly the IRS isn't gonna require the quarterly reporting, but just the yearly reporting. So so we got, we've got the quarterly here. So how often you file and pay your taxes? So we're gonna be filing uh, taxes either quarterly, monthly, uh, semi-weekly, so we're gonna say, we're gonna be doing it, let's say monthly, uh, effective date, let's just say 1122, and then form payment schedules, form 941, semi-weekly uh, current schedule. I'm gonna keep that basically as is, because we ran that, and I don't think, well, let's go ahead and save this, hopefully. And then the next item on our list you got the California taxes. Now, this is, of course, specific to a particular state. So I'm not going to go into detail with it, but some states are going to have similar. They're, they're going to line up their payroll obligations to similar to the Fed. And other states are going to be doing something different with payroll, possibly not having the payroll taxes, but collecting their taxes for state obligations some other way. And then we've got the auto payroll. So enroll eligible employees you want to pay automatically uncheck employees to remove them from auto pay. So when you select save changes, you allow Intuit to uh, debit the total payroll you owe for all enrolled employees each pay period from cash account. We'll leave auto payroll on until you tell us to turn it off. So you've got your auto payroll. I'm just gonna leave it as is for the purposes of the practice problem and try to process the payroll on the second month because we'll just do two months of payroll here. So taxes and forms. So if we go into the taxes and forms here, you got the auto taxes and forms is on. That's the default. We'll automatically pay and file your, file your federal state payroll taxes, including year end filing beginning with tax period ending on or after and so on. So hopefully if that should work well and it'll automatically process that and that should be an, an easy thing to do if everything is set up and running properly. Federal form preferences, let's go into that one. Do you want to let an employee, a third party preparer or someone else discuss your tax returns with the IRS? Well, that will add this info to federal form 941, 944, 940. So you can add someone or not here, right? And then you could put the third party. So if you have someone like a CPA or something or an accountant, then you can add them there. This is a question basically on these forms that are the payroll forms. And then paid preparer. Do you use a paid preparer for Gig Drake Qatar's federal tax returns? Uh, we'll add this info to the federal 941. This only applies to forms you file manually. So generally we're gonna say no because we are not having a paid preparer because we, we're paying 
QuickBooks, in essence, to give us the information so that we could file it ourselves. So closing that out. And then we've got the federal form preferences. Let's go into that. So do you want to let employees? I already did that. I did that one. That one's done. That's done. Dishes are done, dude. Okay. That's in a movie, I think. I don't I can't remember. Federal form preferences. I did that. So email notifications. So if I go into the email notifications, you've got your email address, set uh, notifications, send to you, uh, uh, form filing notifications. So you're going to get your email payday notifications and so on. So I typically would keep the, the defaults to get that information. Payday notifications on, send same day, submission due, send day before. So you have an option to get it on or before tax payment reminders so those are your re reminder settings let's go to the next one email profile management so going into that one uh, let employees edit their info in workforce we'll send you an email when any changes are made so they can possibly make the changes remember that we entered the data into the system based on their w2 form and we had the option of i mean sorry their w4 form and we had the option of basically sending them an email and letting them uh, make the changes based on their W-4 form. Our responsibility is to take the information that they gave us and then file the withholdings or do the withholdings in accordance with the law based on that information. Our obligation is not generally to give them tax advice, right? We're, we're, we're just facil we're just the collect tax collecting mechanism with regards to payroll taxes. They got to give us the information to do so which is the w4 form which hopefully they can they can basically give to us automatically you know into quickbooks on their end which would be great shared data so here's our shared data allow employees to import w2 data into uh turbo tax so turbo tax is owned by by uh into it the same owner of quickbooks so if you can get so you know they're trying to do some integration between making it easier to go from the taxes to filing the bookkeeping to filing the taxes and the w-2s and stuff it's uh that integration is not perfect to me yet but i mean if they can uh improve it that would be great i i check in on it from time to time to see to see if i think it's uh how uh, how effective it is but connect your bank and send money uh with quickbooks to use direct deposit to pay your workforce as well as e-file and e-pay your taxes you need to connect your bank account so you got your bank account for the direct pay stuff which we'll, we'll not get into at this point and then we've got uh employee profile so let employees edit there we did that shared data and then bank accounts something that's not quite right with your bank accounts i'm not going to go into that printing so something is not quite right with it give us a few minutes to try again and then let's do let's go into the accounting here we're going to go into the accounting and so now we have the paycheck and payroll payments so this if i go into this it's going to be coming out of our checking account now note like sometimes uh, you might set up another account just for payroll and it's kind of tedious to do that but it could be it could be a little bit easier if there's an issue so you kind of and why it's a little bit more tedious is that you might set up an account that you're going to transfer money out of your checking account into the payroll account just to cover payroll and then process the payroll checks out of payroll so that's a little tedious why would you do that because then all of your payroll checks are just in one place and the, the problem with them having them all in the checking account is that it's a little bit more difficult to kind of manage what happened with payroll it's a little bit easier if you, because there's so much stuff going on in the cash account it has more transactions than any other account so if you make a transfer out of your cash account just to cover the payroll and then pay the payroll out of it then if there's an issue you can look at the payroll cat check-in account and it'll only have payroll transactions which might make it a little bit easier to figure out what's going on. But we're taking it out of the checking account here. Wage, so there's here's where you can change your wages. So where do you track employee wages in your QuickBooks chart of accounts? So which account do we want them to go to? We could say all employees' wages are posted to one expense account. That's what we currently have. And then we chose the expense account down here 
of wages. Now, if you don't like wages, you could change the name to whatever you want to change in the chart of accounts like we talked about before. It's just pointing to like a normal account, which is a sub account on uh, the GL. So we're just selecting the account that we want there. But each employee wages are posted to their own expense account. So if you go to this uh, item, now I can go to each of these employees and if I want them going to some different account, one possibly salary, one possibly wages or non-salary, one possibly from one department like sales, the other from the administration department, you can do that and breaking it out that way. Each employee's wages are posted to different types of accounts, salary, contractor, and so on. So you can get into more detail there. So we're going to keep it the way it was, but there's your options. You're going to close that back out. Then you've got the employer taxes. Let's check that out. So where do you track employer taxes that you've paid expenses in your QuickBooks? So now we're talking about the taxes that we match, not the taxes pulled out of the employee check, but our taxes. Now QuickBooks online rightly now breaks it out into its own account by default, which is the taxes, payroll uh, expense taxes. Again, if you wanna change the name or something, then you can go into just the GL and change the name and map it to the same area if you so choose. Uh, so that's uh, nice by default. You could have employer taxes are posted to different expense accounts for different employees. That's less likely that you're gonna do that, uh, but maybe you have your taxes like as part of cost of goods sold if you're a construction company and you wanna have them in cost of goods sold as opposed to in other expenses or something like that. So, and, and for certain employees versus other employee taxes are posted to different expenses and so on. We're gonna keep the default. The default is good for our purposes. So there's those two. And then the liabilities, if I go into that one, you've got the federal taxes. Now this is on the liability side. So this is the default account. So if I go into, that's the account that it's going to. Again, you could change the account if you wanna call it something different, you can just call it payroll liabilities or so on. And maybe you don't need all three forms, right? Because they're trying to cover every form that you might have. If you're just doing 941s, maybe you just put, you change the name of the account in the chart of accounts to just 941 uh, liability there possibly. And then they're breaking out the federal unemployment into its own, its own place here. That's the FUTA, which we didn't do because it's kind of small and we don't want to make things overly complicated but it's going to its own account. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to group them all into one account. You could, you could put them into one account, but generally that's a pretty good setup because you know, these are all, these are all the social security, Medicare, which is our like FICA kind of taxes, employee and employer portion that are all going to one place. And then this one's kind of a different tax. It has a different form the 940. So if you're trying to tie this out, to your 941s, then they're all kind of in one account here. And if you're trying to tie this out to the 940, it'll be in another GL account. Notice you don't have as much leeway to break this out this way into like, if I just wanted the nine, the, 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 the to break this side out into like employer versus employee or the Medicare versus the social security, you actually have more flexibility to do that kind of thing in the desktop version, but this is a pretty good setup, so it works fine for my purpose. The, the, anything I've seen, that's usually the way you'd want it to go. And then you got your California stuff, which I won't get into because that, again, that's kind of state specific. And so employer, employer taxes, liabilities, and then you've got your class tracking. So class tracking, if you want to, if you turned on the class tracking, that's where you can break out your income statement by class and run reports by class, update, existing transactions, update accounting preferences for past transactions according to the current preferences. So in other words, if you made a change to like these accounts, then you gotta say, do you want that change to be to be taking place retroactively and, and so that all of your accounts for the entire year, usually you would want to be reflecting the same, right? You, you, don't, you, you wouldn't want your accounts to be split up for half the year and not split up for half the year, you would think between two wage accounts or something, you would want it to be adjusting retroactively to prior payrolls posted generally, you would think. All right, so we didn't really change anything here, but the idea is that there's our added payroll settings. One of those payroll settings being a place where you can adjust your liability account. So obviously you can adjust these 
liability accounts and map them differently. And then if you just want to change the name to these liability accounts, then you can just go to the chart of accounts, which is on the left hand side, accounting chart of accounts. And then you can just edit, edit your accounts down here on those wages accounts. So the wages accounts are way down here. The wages accounts are way down. Where are they? Found it. There they are. So you can just edit this if you wanted to, if you wanted to call it payroll account or something. And maybe you don't want sub accounts, although I think they work quite well. And so maybe you want to call this one uh, uh, payroll taxes instead of just taxes under the sub account. So you can, shake, you can make those changes and that's fine because the, the mapping is going to this particular account. If you want to have two accounts impacted, you have to add the two accounts and then change the mapping to be mapping to those two accounts based on the two employees or something like that. All right, that's the general idea. Uh, if you were in the business view, by the way, that is located under the bookkeeping, the GL that is, and then the chart of accounts, I mean, not the GL, there it's under the bookkeeping. So there it is, no changes. So we won't open a trial balance or anything because it should be the same like it was last time. And so we'll continue next time.